Hi everybody, it's Kendra here. Welcome back. Today I am going to take you through dyeing some linen and cotton yarn. Now I think it's the perfect time of year as we get into some warmer weather um, as when we're thinking about some lighter knits to be using linen and cotton. So I'm going to show you where I purchased my yarn from as well as the dyeing process. Alright, let's jump in. so much for coming back to check out today's video. I'm going to be taking you through how I dyed this linen yarn. Now a lot of times when we dye yarn we're dyeing uh, animal fibers, so wool or alpaca, things like that, and to do so we use acid dyes which need to be set with citric acid or vinegar or something as well as heat. Now with plant fibers we use fiber reactive dyes and they are set with a sodium carbonate, so not baking soda but more of the washing soda you could find in the laundry aisle or soda ash is another way that it is sold and that is used to set the dye. Now I have dyed a lot of um, plant fibers when it comes to fabric and I'm really excited to take you through using some of those processes on yarn. I picked up this linen yarn, I ordered it off Etsy and it came from Lithuania. It took just under a month to arrive and I'm really kind of intrigued to see how it works up. It is lace weight so it's super fine and each of these skeins has is 100 grams and 1700 meters. So again, super fine. You can just tell um, by hearing those numbers. And it is each one retailed for about $8 Canadian and altogether shipping was quite low as well, which is why I decided to order from Lithuania instead of choosing a Canadian supplier for that. So I ordered this yarn from a shop on Etsy called Lovely Crafts Home. They have a lot of linen options, definitely seems to be their specialty, but um, they have more linen fabrics than they do yarn. So it's kind of a mixture there. And already I'm kind of planning to do some sort of summer garment, maybe a t-shirt or something along those lines, and I do plan to hold it double. So I'm going to be dyeing these the same um, in hopes that I will be able to do that, hold them double, and have a little bit of a thicker um, finished garment than just the weight, lace weight. As a point of comparison, here's a fairly typical fingering weight yarn, um, an 80-20 merino blend, and here is this lace weight linen. If you want to compare kind of the sizes of each individual strand, and also you can just really tell the stiffness of this linen at this point. I'm really interested to see how it changes through the dyeing process and also softens up potentially um, when it comes time to knit and wash it. This yarn, I also ordered the natural unpainted gray, called unpainted or natural gray. And so you can tell the color and there are white options that are bleached, but I thought I'd go with the natural and um, sometimes natural fibers do end up being a bit softer. And since I'm going to be dyeing it myself anyways, I don't mind having a more muted end result by starting with the gray. So I'm going to jump in by letting these yarns soak in water to begin with and because they are quite stiff I do want to just let them soak on their own and then I'm going to have them soak in the washing soda. So now that it's been soaking or I let it soak for a bit just in regular water I'm going to go ahead and add my what I use is washing soda but again it's sodium carbonate. I just have a bit here. I'm going to add it in to let it dissolve and then let my yarn soak in there. Um, I know with fabric they kind of, I've heard it recommended around an hour. I'm just going to let it soak for a while and see how it goes. Add these in and you'll see I did add in um, some of my own ties. I noticed that it only had a couple ties and with such fine yarn I got a little worried. So I did add in a few of myself. I do have my trusty dye pot that I'm mixing this in, however that's totally not required. You are more than able to use any kind of container, like a plastic container to mix it. It's just since that's what I've been using for dyeing anyways, I figure I might as well mix it in here. But since it won't be heated, it does not matter what kind of container you are going to be mixing your dyes in. We are now going to mix up our dye and you do this by mixing it in a small container and adding a bit of water, stirring as you go, just to make sure that it is fully dissolved and that there's no clumps in your dye or in your project. We'll then mix it into the large container, again just stirring to make it as even as we can, rinsing it out, and we'll be able to add our yarn back in there. Now you can add it, add the dye after you have the yarn in the pot, and again it's just different things you can kind of play with and see how it changes the look on your finished project. 
We'll let it sit for at least an hour, stirring as you go, um, just in increments to try to keep it as even as you can. And again, just kind of check it and see how your color is looking and whether you want it to sit longer or not. We're going to go ahead and rinse it out once we're done. And you just keep on rinsing until the water runs clear. You don't want to have any bleeding or any more dye kind of coming out of the yarn at this point. You just keep rinsing till it's clear. We will then let it dry completely and have a look at how our finished yarn looks. All right, so it's the next day and I have to jump in and say, eh, things aren't going so well. So I dyed my yarn and I let it sit for a long time and it did soak up a lot of the dye. But if you remember how I said I purchased the gray yarn, yeah, it might have been a better idea to have gone for the white if I wanted a more vibrant color. Also, you will recall <laughs> that I put some ties in my skein. However, three is not enough. In addition to the two that it came with, it needed more. So if you're purchasing this yarn, heads up. This is where I'm at. I tried to make it into a skein and um, yeah. Let's just say we're kind of in sad shape. So the second skein, I've already started trying to cake it up. Um, and yeah, it's kind of a mess. Um, it's not actually tangled. They're just kind of, well, I don't know. It's kind of tangled, I guess. I don't have any actual knots, um, but it's definitely a slow process. Things are kind of all stuck together in here and um, yeah, it's definitely not caking up all that nicely. And you can also tell there is some differences in the color, but it didn't make a huge difference. And so that's partially the color of the, of the linen to start with, as well as the dye color I chose. I didn't want to go super dark like a black because I do want it for like a summer top. So I decided to stick with it and we'll see um, if the difference is more noticeable once it is kind of put into to the cake and then knit up and um, I don't know how well it picks up on camera but there are variations in it I don't know how well it picks up on camera there are variations but it's not to the extent I was hoping for 
so that's kind of where I ended up with my linen but I will say as difficult as it's being to um, put it into the cake the linen is so strong and uh, as you're kind of pulling on what's basically a thread um, to separate it from the rest of the skein you can just tell compared to the wool where the wool would snap the linen is very strong so I think it will be really nice and it has even softened up through um, the dyeing process all the washing and drying and things um, so I do have high hopes for it. it's not a lost cause but I did learn some things so I hope you can take what I learned and apply it to your own dye especially if you purchase this exact linen from this Etsy shop so having decided, learned all of that, I decided to jump back in and dye a little bit of cotton that I have. This isn't the same sort of situation. I just purchased this at Michael's. It is a Bernat Handicraft yarn. So very inexpensive. I think it was $1.50 and then half price off of that. It was just white and I wanted to just use the same processes. I use the same dye and everything to show what it would look like if you did start with a white yarn. So I did two different experiments here. Here, the first being um, this one. This is the same color that I used on the gray and you can just tell that it is still quite muted and there's a lot of nice variation in there. Second up, I decided to put it in a container and just sprinkle some dye on top and it did break a little bit meaning the color separated um, but I think it's really fun. It's a nice kind of complement to the other one. I'm thinking when it's time to knit it, I might put these um, kind of together, oops, fallen apart already, and make some dishcloth pairs or something like that. So anyways, this is the process for dyeing linen and cotton. I hope that you can still learn a few things from this and be able to apply it to your own dyeing. Um, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.